All right, I'm, com I'm just continuing my lessons and examples on using the normal model and z-scores and probabilities and areas under the curve. Um, and in this case, we're going to work backwards from what we've been doing in some of my previous videos, and we're going to put it all together. We're going to find a value of x when we are given a probability. So a few things that we need to keep in mind is our formula for z-scores which is z equals x minus mu, the mean, divided by sigma, the standard deviation. Now, if I do a little bit of algebra here, I can solve for x. I am actually finding x. That's what we're looking for at this point in time. So if I were to uh, multiply by sigma on both sides of this equation, x minus mu divided by sigma. If I multiply by sigma on both sides of the equation, these would cancel out. Let's rewrite that a little bit better. These two sigmas would reduce out, and I'd be left with, move this up and give myself a little bit more space. I would be left with sigma times z is equal to x minus mu. And then if I add mu to both sides, that's going to lead me to this formula over here, which says that x is equal to mu plus z times the standard deviation, sigma. <clears throat> so this is, this is what I'm going to eventually use, but this is where it came from. So if you didn't remember or, or memorize this formula over here, as long as you can remember your formula for z-scores, which is over here, then you can just use algebra to find your value of x. All right, let's take a look at this situation. We're going to be drawing a picture to symbolize everything. It says the braking distances of a sample of Honda Accords are normally distributed. This is important. If this did not say it was normally distributed, I could not use a normal model. On a dry surface, the mean braking distance was 142 feet. Again, I'm going to highlight some things. The mean is 142 feet. And it tells me that the standard deviation was 6.51 feet. Now, what is the longest braking distance on a dry surface one of these Honda Accords could have and still be in the top 1%? This top 1% is my area. That's the area that I am given. I need to draw a picture to represent this, and it makes things a whole lot easier to visualize. I want to know the top I am concerned with, I should say, the top 1%. So the top 1% is going to be this area right here. In fact, I probably have even drawn this area a little bit too large, but I want to make it large enough so that we can see. There is a z-score that cuts off this top 1%, 0 0.01. I don't know what that z-score is yet, but I'm going to find out what it is, and then I'm going to solve for my x value. Well, let's write down the things that I know. I know that the mean of this distribution is 142. I know that the standard deviation is 6.51. And I know that the area is 0 .0, 0.01, the area I'm concerned with is top 1%. So I need to figure out what z-score cuts off the top 1%. <clears throat> Excuse me. I've used, in some of my previous videos, I showed you how to find this. And the, what you want to use on your calculator is second vars, so you go to your distribution menu, and we want to go down to number three, inverse norm. So I am using an inverse normal function in order to give the calculator an area, and then the calculator will give me the z-score that cuts off that area. Now the calculator always assumes that the value you are going to give to it is the value to the left. Okay, This is what the calculator wants over here on this side. So if 1% is above this z-score, that means 99% is below it. Let's go back to my calculator. And the area to the left of that z-score that I'm looking for is 0.99. When I hit Enter, here is my value of 
or my z-score value. Sorry for the hesitation there. My calculator is not, or my, my computer is slowing down on me a little bit here. Here we go. <clears throat> so this z-score that cuts off the top 1% is a z-score of, I can erase this now, a z-score of 2.33. I'll round off to two decimal places. All right, now I'm ready to find my value for x. You should remember that the formula for z-score is this, so I could plug in all those numbers and do the algebra to solve for x, but I could also use this formula right here that already has been solved for x and just plug in the values that I know. So x is going to be equal to mu, which is 142, plus my z-score, which is 2.33, times my standard deviation, which is 6.51. Let's jump back to our calculators. There's nothing wrong with using technology. It's available to us. It is a tool, so we should use it. 142 plus 2.33 times 6.51. And whoops, I must have made a mistake somewhere. So let's see what that is. Oh, I put a parentheses in there and I should not have. Let me clear it out, do it again. 142 plus 2.33 times 6.51. I didn't need those parentheses. So I hit enter and there we go. 157.1683. But that's really not what I want. I don't want just that number. This is a word problem and I should type my answer or give my answer in a complete sentence. So if I look back to the question, the question says, what is the longest braking distance on a dry surface one of these Honda Accords could have and still be in the top 10, top 1%? So I'm just going to rewrite that question as a sentence. Here we go. The longest, well, let's start it a different way. About 157.17 feet is the longest braking distance one of these Honda Accords could have to still be in the top 1%. Scroll down so you can see this a little bit better. But you notice I have just taken the question and changed it into a sentence. About 157.17 feet is the longest braking distance one of these Honda Accords could have to still be in the top 1%. So there's an example of how you can take a probability, the top 1%, and change it into an X value.